The donkey cart control problem has been around for a long time, yet it's still a modern day problem. We're going to go ahead and use a first order plus time delay model to model the donkey cart and use the three parameters from the first order plus time delay model, tau, k, and theta, the time constant, the gain, and the dead time. Now this is about the simplest model that you can get, but we're going to use this in order to be able to obtain PID tuning parameters and uh, be able to approximate uh, tau i, kc, and tau d, uh, at least obtain initial tuning parameters. You can also have p, i, and d. In MATLAB we use p, i, and d, and that's just related to tau i, kc, and tau d is shown there. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, obtain our process model and then obtain PID tuning parameters. Now, the way that we're going to do this, um, you, there's a lot of different tuning rules out there. We're just going to start with some simple tuning. Now, this works well in many, many cases. Tau i just equals tau p, k c equals 1 over kp, k, and then tau d equals 0. And then implement that in MATLAB. So let's go ahead and do our modeling uh, for this process. Our desired, let's say our desired velocity is 2.2 .2 meters per second. And the mass of our cart and our donkey is 400 kilograms with the force, a gravitational force down. And we also have a resistive coefficient. So as we increase our velocity, we have a, a force uh, you know, that prevents us or slows us down. We also have the uh, C, which is relates how many times we switch the donkey per minute to the force that the donkey pulls on the cart. And then we also have a time delay of two seconds. We want to know U, which is the switches per minute. Now let's go ahead and write our force balance. We have our accumulation term, our mass times acceleration, and then we have our resistive, and then we also have our uh, force forward. Now you have the two second time delay bet between the time that you start switching the donkey and when it starts responding. Let's get our three parameters. So we can take this model and relate it to this first order plus time delay model, tau p equals m over b, kp equals c over b, and our process dead time is two seconds. Okay, so we have our process model from a first principles approach. Let's do a steady state analysis just to determine what you would be if we plugged in our X target of 2.2 meters per second. So that's going to be 11.9 switches per minute um, that we should eventually get to to achieve a steady state um, condition of 2.2 meters per second. Let's go ahead and start up Simulink just by opening MATLAB and type in Simulink and that will bring up the Simulink uh, library browser. Go ahead and click New Model, and they'll bring up a new model for you. And then you can start dragging things over from the library browser. Let's go ahead and go into our sources, just uh, drag in a constant. And this is going to be switches per minute. We're going to show manual control first. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. and. Um, what I want to do now is, is what's my transfer function that I need? I'm going to take my first order plus time delay model. Now this is the one that uh, we derived earlier. I'm just going to I'm, I'm going to uh, convert this into a Laplace domain um, and uh, do that by taking the Laplace transform of my differential equation. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and add in the time delay as well. Put the kp, tau p, and theta p there. Now I'm going to go ahead and combine x. Uh, terms on the left and then the U terms on the right and then go ahead and divide through. Now this is going to be my transfer function. This describes the input output relationship between switches per minute and the velocity. Changes in switches per minute to changes in velocity. I'm going to say that my nominal conditions are zero so those uh, those are the steady state values. Okay, so now we're going to implement this transfer function in MATLAB block diagram. We're actually just going to leave off the delay first. So I'm going to uh, just put my transfer function over here, put in my gain, okay, so 0 0.185, and then my time constant, tau p, which is 8.89, and this is going to be my donkey cart. Okay, so that, that describes the dynamics of my donkey cart. And then I'm also going to put a scope on there. That just to be able to show the velocity with a trend, a plot. Okay, and then I'm going to simulate out to 30 seconds and go ahead and open up my plot. And I can see that I'm going 0 0.185 with one switch per minute. Okay, so that's our, my according to my gain. Now I'm going to put 11.8 or 11.9. You can see I get up to about 2.2 meters per second. That's the desired velocity. So this is manual control. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, let a controller decide how many switches per minute instead of me deciding how many switches per minute. And so I'm going to drop a PID over there. Now I'm going to use the simple tuning rules that we showed before, 1 over KP, 
and then I'm going to do 1 over kp times tau p. Uh, those are just some simple uh, tuning rules just to get you started. Um, and go ahead and click OK. So we have our PID controller. Let's link this up and then also put in a summation here. We need to sum up the, well, we need to take the difference between the actual velocity and the set point. Okay, I'm going to put a negative sign here just to make that uh, a difference between the two and then feed that, that error, that difference into my PID controller. And I'm going to put my set point here. This is going to be the desired velocity. So now instead of di dictating the uh, actual s uh, switches per minute, I'm going to, this controller allows me to put in a set point now. I want to go 2.2 meters per second. Let me go ahead and simulate this for 30 seconds. You can see that the controller was able to get it up to 2.2. Okay, now what I want to do is go ahead and compare, uh, you know, actually just, um, let me go ahead and just increase the, uh, the controller aggressiveness just a little bit here. And you can see that I'm able to get up there faster. I'm able to get up to 2.2, just a little bit of overshoot. So maybe a little bit better performance. And you can play with these uh, tuning parameters. Now what I want to do is just compare that to manual control. I should have kept a copy of my manual control there just to show uh, the difference between the two. So this is going to be switches per minute again. And then I'm going to have manual. I'm going to label this manual control. And then this one is automatic control. OK. Now, um, you know, same process model there. Now let me go ahead and just move that up because that's the first one that we, we worked on. Okay, and then uh, let me go ahead and simulate this. Um, now that I've got a, I put in 2.2 switches per minute. Actually, I needed to put in 11.8. That was my steady state value because that's my switches per minute. So let me compare just side by side uh, the two. So you can see that you have better control with the automatic as it, as it does a little bit of overshoot on the uh, switches per minute and then settles back down. Kind of like how you'd accelerate with your car and your gas pedal. Okay, so there's our cruise control attempt with the donkey. Um, now what we want to do is go ahead and show uh, an instability, how, how, how far we can push this controller before it comes unstable. Let's go ahead and add back in, first of all, though, the time delay uh, that we had left out in the earlier analysis. This is just going to be a transport delay. Okay, so I'm going to go back over to uh, just go ahead and widen that a little bit because I need to insert something here. So what I'm going to do is go over to the uh, library browser, go ahead and delete those connections, and look for delay. And then you can see a transport delay. Go ahead and just drag that over. Now that's going to be the delay of when the donkey starts receiving the switches to when it starts responding. You can either put that before or after the transfer function block. Um, it doesn't matter in this case. I'm going to go ahead and just copy that and drag that in here. You'll need to right click to bring that back over to the uh, scope. Okay, to, to take that signal back over to the scope and split it. Okay, so I'm also going to put a delay in here. Okay, and then uh, let's go ahead and just uh, re-simulate this. And now you can see the two second time delay before it responds as it did before, also in the automatic control. A little bit more overshoot here, so it takes a little bit longer as the controller starts getting, saying, hey, I'm not there yet, and so it starts responding a little bit more aggressively, you get a little bit more overshoot. Okay, so now my, I have a lot more overshoot. Let me go ahead and put a gain of 40 in here and look at it again. Now you can see my donkey is starting to go unstable, uh, f fluctuating between uh, very high and low speeds. You know, it should be common sense. You don't want instability with donkey carts. Okay, so let me go ahead and summarize. Um, just create a summary of what we've looked at so far. First of all, we want to obtain a process model. And you can either do that with empirical or first principles approaches. The empirical approaches, those are ones with uh, data driven. The first principles, those are with uh, equations from balance equations, etc. Uh, empirical, you don't have to know a lot about the system. You can just collect data, input output data, and fit models. Okay, so step two, after you obtained a process model, in this case a first order plus dead time model, uh, you can approximate, you can approximate it uh, as this first order plus dead time. We call that FOPDT. Okay, so if you have a higher order model, you need to simplify that down or uh, you know fit uh, fit something. Basically, you need KP, tau P, and theta P. Third step is obtain PID tuning constants from KP, tau P, and theta P. Now, the simple tuning correlations that I showed, you know, they work well in a lot of situations. Case equals 1 over KP, tau I equals tau P, tau D equals uh, 0. Those are just simple tuning rules. They work well in many cases. 
Okay, step four is test the PID tuning in simulation, and this allows you to look at uh, stability limits. We're going to take a look at that later on using Bode plots, other methods to look at stability. Uh, but in this case, you can just uh, move it up and down. So, okay, visit AP Monitor for more information.